Let's assume we have a block of some sort with a string. You're pulling up on the string or the rope as it slides horizontally, and it's accelerating. The tension in the rope or string is 35 newtons. There is friction present with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.25, and the object has a mass of 5 kilograms. So the first thing is to draw the force diagram, and again, the, the purpose will be to, to find the acceleration. Draw a force diagram. Now, the weight equals 49 newtons. Oopsies, the normal force should be less. Bad teacher. You have tension angled up that way. This tension is up at an angle of 38 degrees. And then you'll have some kinetic friction horizontally straight back. Not opposite the tension, but horizontally straight back. Kinetic friction. That's our force diagram. Now, I need to resolve the vectors, the components of the tension, because that's the one that gets the triangle. Right? The weight doesn't get a triangle because it's all in the y-axis. The normal force is all in the y-axis. The friction is all in the x-axis. No triangle necessary. But the tension is both x and y. Right? It's pulling to the right, x-axis, and it's also pulling up, y-axis. So we need to resolve that. I'm going to just draw it separately over here, make it a little bit bigger. Remember that these really are arrows, not lines, because we're drawing vectors. So this is T, which represents the hypotenuse in this case, and that's 35 newtons. So our, our hypotenuse is 35. This is the angle of 38 degrees. Ty, Tx. Ty is going to be equal to 35 times the sine of the angle, right? T sine theta. 35 the hypotenuse, tension, whatever your given tension is, times the sine of whatever that angle is. Tx is going to be, it's adjacent to the angle. So the cosine of 38 is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Solve for the adjacent side, Tx. That will be the tension, 35, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 38. And I calculated these to be, let me see, 21.5 for TY and 27.6 for TX. Okay, now I'm going to start in the Y axis because I need to calculate the friction and I need the normal force for that. There's no motion in the Y axis. So it's in equilibrium on the y-axis. Net force is equal to zero. Therefore, the two upward forces, N and Ty, equals the one downward force of the weight. Put in your numbers. You see the weight's 49. Ty is 21.5. So N plus 21.5 equals 49. Subtract the 21.5 to the other side, and you get 27.5. That's, we're done with the y-axis. Now I need to calculate the friction. Kinetic friction equals mu times the normal force. Mu I made up here is 0.25. A coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force.
And that comes out to be, uh, where is it, 6.9 newtons. Okay. In the x-axis, the net force is not equal to zero. It's accelerating in the x-axis. You've got two forces in the x-axis. You've got the x component of the tension, what I've labeled as Tx. That's to the right. That's 27.6 newtons. And you've got the friction to the left, which is only 6.9 newtons. So it's the difference between Tx, not T, but Tx, minus the kinetic friction. And that's going to be, as I just said, 27.6 minus 6.9. It does matter which order you place these in. It should be the larger force minus the smaller force. We typically subtract friction anyhow. And this comes out to be 20.7 newtons. And so that's the net force. That's the unbalanced force that causes the acceleration. Solve for the acceleration, which is net force all over mass. So 20. 0.7 all over 5, and that is 4.1 meters per second squared.